Thank you. Um, no, thank you very much for allowing me to be here. Maya, thank you for uh, organizing all of this. This is great. Um, on behalf of the Drupal Association, I want to thank uh, Evolving Web for having me speak here for a moment. It'll be a little bit different than the technical conversation we've been having. I'm not a technical person. Uh, Maya read my uh, um, background. She also reminded me I'm not a young person anymore. So, <laughs> um, but uh, what I want to cover today is a little background on the Drupal Association. I want to cover who I am, who we are, for those that might not know that. Uh, the, we're going to go into the new strategy, the new uh, three-year um, strategy that the Drupal Association Board has created for Drupal, uh, end of life for Drupal 7, uh, the Open Web Manifesto, and, uh, and then finally the, the Drupal's digital public good. Um, there's a theme that, that runs through all these topics, uh, which maybe at the end I'll let you guess what you think that theme is. But as you listen to the presentation, hopefully you begin to see um, how these issues tie together. Uh, what I, my goal here today is so that you're aware of what the Drupal Association is doing uh, and, and the activities we're undertaking. Um, and my ask is, the last thing and at the end, is that as we do, as you do your day-to-day -day work, whether it's in coding and design and marketing and business development and sales with Drupal, that you understand that there's a bigger battle going on with Drupal. There's a bigger, bigger public purpose going on with Drupal, and that's what the association and more directly the association board is concerned with. Um, it's how open source thrives, survives, and thrives uh, in the open web. So we'll get into that. Now, um, so I was at dinner last night with some staff, and uh, Alex, you know, I said, what's a lightning talk? Or I was thinking, I said, what's a lightning talk? But, you know, these kind of events have so much content. I'm really impressed. I'm learning stuff, uh, you know, just packed together. Um, and so I said, well, we'll lightning talk. And so the advice I got was that I should have 10 slides only, and each slide should have one word. So that's what we're going to do. <laughs> All right. So I got ten slides. Yeah, actually, I have more than ten slides. We oh, yeah, have one word. So the first word is about. You're going to learn about me and about the Drupal Association. Okay, this is this is where I cheat a little bit. I can't really keep it just to ten slides. Um, so I'm, I've been on about eleven months uh, with the Drupal Association. I don't have a background. I have a background in not-for-profit government experience. I built IT systems but I don't have a background in open source, and I don't have a specific background in Drupal. My previous company used Drupal, but I wasn't the one working in it at all. In fact, I've never written a line of code in my life. Um, so I think one thing that I bring to the table, they all have to see the weakness. One thing I bring to the table is an outside perspective on Drupal and on open source. Uh, and I think that's part of what the board would think about when they hired me. So I've spent the first 11 months learning, listening, uh, trying to understand. I love going to these events. This is my second in-person event um, or, or at the local state in-person event. I learn, every time I go, I learn stuff. Um, and now coming up in a 12 month anniversary, a one year anniversary, I think the board's gonna want me to do something. So I'm gonna have to shift from learning to actually doing something. Um, that's what we'll talk about here in a little bit. Um, if you don't know the uh, association, the association, we're pretty small. Uh, about 15 employees. Uh, we're globally distributed. Uh, most of our um, uh, staff are in the U.S., uh, but I have two staff in Spain and one in India, uh, and we're trying to grow that global presence. You know, Dries mentioned earlier today when someone asked him about the, you know potential future growth in, in Drupal, and he, he brought that geography piece in, and he talked about maybe the growth we want to see is where it, and, and, and a competitive advantage that Drupal has being a global technology is growing geographically, or at least focusing on that as much as other types of growth. So that's who we are. All right, second word, mission. Um, the Drupal Association has rolled out a three-year strategic plan. We have a new, a new vision um, and a new mission statement. And the thing I want to point out, so our vision is our vision is a web that is innovative, inclusive, and open. And our mission is to drive innovation and adoption of Drupal as a high impact digital public good hand in hand with our open source community. Kind of what I want to point out about that is that our vision is not Drupal itself, Drupal at the end. The vision 
is milk and wet. Drupal is the means to that end. It is one of the, it is the tool that, that our mission that we're formed around to promote in order to get to an open web. And I think uh, if you look at our, uh, we're a 501c3, which is a not-for-profit status in the US. Uh, it started in Belgium, and we started a not-for-profit in Belgium and moved it to the US, not sure, uh, 2008, 2007, I believe. Um, and since then, we've been US-based. In our mission statement, where we filed our incorporation uh, paper, it says uh, the mission of the Drupal Association is to promote Drupal. And Suzanne talked about her work on the, or, the group that was formed about a year, a year ago called Promote Drupal. But that is what our mission is, to promote Drupal as, an, as a means to get to an open web, an inclusive web. Um, the, uh, we use that word promote in the, in the broadest sense. So promotion means technology promotion. It means marketing. It means business. It means uh, market adoption all those things in promoting Drupal. So a really broad statement about promoting Drupal. Okay, my fourth word, strategy. Uh, we have a new strategic plan. The board developed a strategic plan for Drupal uh, this past spring, and they voted on it at DrupalCon during an open public meeting. It was approved. There's three parts of our strategic plan, three objectives. Uh, the first objective is that Drupal becomes the most, uh, I'm sorry, the most innovative and impactful web platform in the world by enabling makers and connecting with like-minded projects to advance the open web principles of open access, open standards, free expression, and digital inclusion. A couple things I wanna, I wanna point out there. So first of all, we sidestep the issue of whether it's a CMS or a DXP that was discussed earlier just by calling it an impactful platform. That's our way of saying, no, we don't really know. We're not gonna, we're not gonna sit down on that. Uh, you know, land on that in one spot or the other. Um, but the other thing I would say is we're focusing on makers. So traditionally, uh, the association has members. We're beginning to differentiate those member companies that are makers, that are contributing, and that those are the ones that we want to support and highlight. Last part of that phrase I'll, I'll point out is connecting with like-minded projects. So we recently uh, connected with four open source Rather open source project sent a letter to the European Commission. So the European Commission was proposing a rule that would adversely affect open source. Uh, and I can go into the details later. It's called the Cyber Resilience Act. So we joined with WordPress, Joomla, and Typo3 to craft uh, a letter uh, raising our concerns, and we're engaged with Open Forum Europe um, to uh, to try to advocate for open source in Europe. Uh, say that. A lot of times what happens in Europe, they're kind of ahead of the curve on some of their stuff, like GDPR and other things, and find its way over here. That's the way that we're combining with like-minded projects. Se I'm only on the second objective. Do I, hopefully I'm on time here. You'll let me know if I'm out of time, right? Or give me at least a one minute warning. <laughs> uh, second objective, uh, we're gonna, the Drupal brand is recognized as the platform of choice among ambitious end users in business, public sector, and beyond. It's going to get to my, my, my uh, second word, my, I'm sorry, my sixth word, oops, sorry. Uh, the, and then the third objective is that the Drupal Association um, uh, has a seat at the table in the project, becomes more supportive of the project itself. Because, you know, as a Drupal Association, our job is to support the project and to support the community. We are not the project. The project has core committers, the, the project lead, etc. We are not the community. There's a much broader community than the association. Our job at the association is to provide the infrastructure to support both of those things. We want to be a better supporter of the project, and we want to um, raise uh, funds for uh, uh, Drupal initiatives in the community. And I'll get to that in a second. So I can hit these three objectives in three words, as you might guess it. First is innovation. Um, so our goal in innovation is really threefold. We're going to uh, triple contributions in three years. So contributions to strategic initiatives has actually been growing. There's been a focus on some strategic initiatives, like 10.1 and 10, uh, and contributions have been growing, but they've been growing at, at a very slow rate. Um, and we want to grow. We want to grow that at a quicker rate. So we're going to triple contributions to strategic initiatives in three years. Um, we're going to double the makers. 
So right now we have 53 companies that are part of the association that we would consider makers based on, what, on, on their contributions to uh, the community. Uh, we want to get that to 106 globally in three years. And then lastly, we want um, one quarter of the leadership in the Drupal project and the Drupal community to be new leaders. And what we mean by that is folks that have not had a leadership position in the past. And we're doing this really to address burnout by folks that have been consistently tapped and, and ridden the occasion to provide leadership, um, to provide succession planning uh, so that there's a path for new members of the community to get into the community, to understand the community, and then to rise up in the leadership. And lastly, to bring in new ideas. So if you, we've identified a number of leadership positions uh, across the project and across the community, and uh, we want, in three years, 25% of them to be completely new leaders. We need to have a leadership role in the community in the past. Uh, that would be a very intentional effort. If there's someone in this room that is, you know, you're active in the community and, and you haven't held a leadership position and you'd like to get more involved, um, please let me know. Please contact anyone at the association. That's what we're trying to foster while the number of initiatives out there to do that. So that's one of my asks. When I ask up front, can you get, you know, as you do your day-to-day -day work, is there a way you can get engaged to further the community? This might be one of them. Take a leadership role uh, and one of the leadership roles in the community. Um, how many people here do design? Design work? I'm not saying it's okay. So I should have apologized up front. My design, my project, is horrible. Um, I, I had to do. I told you I had a small staff, 15 people, so I had to do this myself. That's how bad it is. Um, it's okay because the design track is in the other room. So all the that's that's. Are... I should have gotten them. I should have. Uh, I should have had some. And I hope to get to the point where I can have someone that can actually do something. So mine is very. It's kind of. Like, Hitting someone over the head. It's a very blunt design. Okay, next word, marketing. Uh, we have two primary goals with marketing. First, we're gonna develop a marketing strategy. And let me say a word about this marketing strategy. We're not marketing the Drupal Association. We're not marketing the Drupal community. We're not marketing the Drupal developers. We wanna develop and are developing a go-to market plan for Drupal as a product. So as if, as if we own Drupal and we were, you know, we're, we were going to market our product. So we don't own it. We don't, in fact, we don't, the Drupal Association provides zero services to site owners on Drupal, as many of you do. But we're going to develop a plan and take an active role in marketing Drupal as a product. Because we know we're up against a lot of proprietary companies, for, uh, private label companies that have very large marketing budgets and they market Drupal as a, uh, they market their product as a, as a product, and that's a focus we want to have. So that will be developing a market strategy, a market plan strategy for Drupal the product, and the resources that come out of that uh, will be available to our partners to use in your marketing. It also gives a place that when you're advocating someone, uh, someone, uh, one of the questions earlier today was about the, the release information on Drupal.org about releases, and it would be written in a way that makes sense to non-technical folks, and we're explaining why there has to be continued investment in maintenance that, that understands it. That's a perfect example of a, an association role in providing that sort of objective information about uh, that, that can be digested by site owners and non-technical end users. That's what the marketing strategy is about. Um, and then we're going to uh, the one of the metrics we're looking at is the increase in the number of sites, top million sites in terms of traffic worldwide. So a lot of people throw around numbers. Oh, you know this. This technology runs 40% of all websites in the world. Yes, that's not going to be Drupal, right? We recognize Drupal is not there. Drupal is going up market, up, uh, you know, more to the top, top upper shelves uh, than they are going down market. Um, so we're looking at who's driving the most complex websites, who's driving the websites with the most traffic, with the most content, with the most need for functionality. That's where Drupal is going. So we're looking at metrics that will measure that. And that's what we need to message to potential end users. So as a shorthand, you know, uh, BuildWith has, has, has data on sites by usage, by number of users, or by traffic. If we take the top million of, of those, how many is Drupal fund now, or uh, um, uh, service now, and how many, you know, what's our goal? Uh, and obviously that's a percentage we should be looking at, not total number of websites in the world. Last, objective fundraising. Uh, really there's two, Two reasons for this. One is product support, to provide better product support to the core committers and to the rest of the project as they do their work. 
Um, we are looking at um, the type of support. We're looking at uh, contribution friction analysis. So we're going to review the contribution process, see what the friction points are that might be making it hard for people to contribute, addressing those, uh, and, and then, you know, undertaking initiatives that make it easier to contribute and see your contributions committed and, 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 uh, and to take effect. Um, the second is uh, triple revenue. So the Drupal Association, um, uh, my understanding, uh, obviously the pandemic, we rely very much on the Drupal time for our revenues. Obviously, the pandemic is a big hit. Um, there was a fundraising campaign and, and some uh, government funds that kept, our, that kept the Drupal Association alive. When I came on board a year ago, the finances are very stable. Very stable. We have, you know, the, we're in very, very good financial position. Uh, but the board's asking to grow that. Why? Because the community has a lot of needs and wants, um, and uh, and to, in order to be able to fulfill those, we need to raise our revenues. So there's a, a definitely a push on fundraising so that we can fund more community activities. All right, January 25th, 2025. This is my seventh board. Okay, what's this date? Anyone know what this date is? Thank you. You've been listening. You've been listening. That's great. Uh, yes, end of life with Drupal 7. How many people here have sites on Drupal 7? Yeah, my hand is not just up because I want you to put your hands up. As you all probably know, our website is on Drupal 7. Uh, and so we had to make this decision to end it just to force ourselves off of it on Drupal 10. Uh, just kidding. Um, the, uh, what our goal here is Drupal 7. So I, I think Dries explained a lot of, of the reason behind this, and we were involved, as you know, as part of our support for the Drupal project, we were involved in this decision-making process. And the security team and other teams that keeping that factor compatibility was just absorbing so many resources. My understanding historically is that Drupal 7 and Drupal 8 was the strategic division that, that, that took Drupal from hobbyist to professional, from part-timers to, um, to full-timers, from kind of your aunt's yoga shop type of website to uh, you know, something much more university management with a lot of content. Um, it, you know, it's, we're doubling down on that direction and that's where we're going. Our job at the association, there's about 400,000 sites on uh, Drupal 7, is to make that process as smooth as possible for those side ends. So we're focused on awareness, we're contacting as many as we can, um, getting the word out, we have a website up, giving them resources, we're focusing on being a source of good, reliable information. We go to our website. We're not telling them all to go to Google 10. Some of the sites are not appropriate for Google 10. So we actually mention other open source uh, technology that they may want to consider if they have a lighter need. We're not opposed to that uh, because we want to see those 400,000 um, go in the what's best for them. What's best for them in the long run will be best for Drupal. Uh, so yeah, so that's January 25th, uh, 2025, as Dries said, it was about 14-year anniversary. That, we picked that day specifically because it was, a, it was the exact 14th anniversary of Drupal 7 release. And our job is to try to make that transition as smooth as possible for all those side owners. And I hope that in a year and a half, that none of the side owners are surprised and that they all have a plan for their websites by then. All right, open. According to my notes, Three more words. Open. Okay, the Open Web Manifesto. Uh, we published earlier this spring an Open Web Manifesto, and the you know, we went through a process of asking folks uh, in the community. We had a big survey with a hundred responses. What you know? What does the Open Web mean to you? Why do you think it's important? We consolidated that into a manifesto that's about a two-page manifesto that really sums up the goals and the aspirations of Drupal. Again, back to our vision of supporting an open web. It is the why of Drupal beyond the product features. Oftentimes you talk to the site and hey, you, you want to do this, Drupal's the right product feature. I get it, that's good, that's the product feature. But there's a why to Drupal that goes beyond product features. And it goes on to this battle for what will the future of the World Wide Web be? Will it be open? Now I've heard, when I got interviewed a year ago, uh, I was told by a couple board members, hey, open source is one. Open source is one. It's very well known. Outside of the open source community, it's not as well known as open source is one. You know, I just, I'm just saying, it's not, you know, it's not recognized that. 
uh, in the US, uh, it's not as well known that open source is one. And if you ask people what are the biggest technologies out there, they're gonna name private companies. They're not gonna name open source companies. Um, so what we wanted to do by doing an open web manifesto was to put into one spot what our values are, why we believe that vision, and what that vision means. I would suggest reading it. I won't go through all here. Those are some of the, those are the five principles that kind of undergird the whole thing. Um, but I would suggest read it, use it as you, as you can. What we will use it for is uh, we're going to raise funds through philanthropy and uh, specifically value-based philanthropy, which means like-minded foundations that want to support the open web should support the Drupal Association and the Drupal community um, uh, as a means to advancing their values because we, we have a shared alignment of values. Um, and that's how we will use it. Um, we will also use it as we advocate European Union, uh, US, you know, US Congress, etc. cetera. You know, a, a, in the ongoing why Drupal beyond the product feature, why is Drupal important? Why should people be supporting open source? Okay, good, good. We only have two more words left. This is my second to last word. Good, uh, digital public good. So Drupal uh, was designated a digital public good uh, several months ago we applied um, and we had the designation. Uh, and really all this does is, it, you know, Dries had, had written many years ago a blog post where he talked about, I think this is during the makers and takers blog post, and he talked about the public good. Um, what registration and acceptance as a digital public good means, it provides a clarity of, of perspective about the role Drupal plays and the risks of underinvestment. As a public good, it's really easy to use it and not invest in it. And so we need to call that out. As a private good, private companies have an incentive to charge for the use of their things. You know, but just like a public, like a like a public park or a common area, it's very easy to underinvest in it because anyone can use it without paying for it. So, registration will allow us again to make the case to philanthropists and other folks that have that, that share our values for why we need resources to maintain this. It's also a reminder to us about the risk that we have of a you know one of the largest open source projects in the world, Drupal. Um, I think I'm not sure. I'm still new. But uh, one of the largest maybe without a major corporate for profit sponsor. Uh, that you know there is not one for profit company that kind of controls it all and sponsors the whole project. Uh, the risk we have, the risk that the association is very aware of, is this risk of underinvestment, which is why we have the whole strategic plan. Why we need to push innovation, why we need to push marketing and, and focus on fundraising. So we have the resources there to uh, to keep it going for the next twenty years. Um, so that takes me back to uh, the, my ask of uh, uh, starting the beginning, which is, I give you an overview, there's a lot more going on, um, I had to keep this tight and consistent, um, but there's a lot more going on. My ask that as you, as you go through your day, as you go through your work on the technical side, the community side, the marketing side, sales, account management, uh, design, um, you're working by yourself, you're working with a, a company to get engaged with the association and the activities that we're getting on, to get engaged in the community. Two ways, in many ways you can do it. Two is if your company is not a member or supporting partner of the Drupal Association, I would ask that you do that. If you personally are not a member of the association, I would ask that you, you become a member. But there's no mandatory dues or anything like that. Uh, of course, we accept contributions, but there's not mandatory. In fact, being a member, so we can have numbers with show. We have about 2,500 members now. We're trying to build it back up uh, post uh, pandemic. Outside of just the associa association, get engaged in the project. We talked earlier, and other speakers talked earlier about contribution and the need for contribution. I, I can't tell you enough, that is super important. So, with that, let me go to my last word. Thanks. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak here today. I look forward to meeting folks uh, anytime. Uh, the rest of the day I'm here to ask questions, make points. If I say anything that offended you, please tell me. If I said something you like, you can tell me that too. Um, ask any questions you have. Thank you so much. <laughs>